Live across the UK, it's the Late Night Revolution for a Wednesday night, 22nd of March. And on this show, we like to talk to fascinating people, entertaining people, and people who try and make people laugh, which isn't the easiest thing to do. And we have two stars in the studio, uh, which is great for me because I didn't have to even pay for a taxi because they were just across the street. Yep. Guys, you're in from uh, Pete and Dud, uh, Come Again. And uh, I tell you, when I saw this, I nearly did, to be honest with you. <laughs> and we've got uh, Kevin Bishop in and uh, Tom Goodman-Hill. How nice, double barrel. That's that show, know. Is, isn't it? Yeah. It's, you know, it's a mark of quality, really, the hyphen, uh, which Kevin sadly lacks. <laughs> it's uh, I lack a hyphen. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the quality, that's fair to <laughs> it's, it's almost a sign of being either a toff or very, very posh, isn't uh, it? Or, or an actor who had to change his name, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, which is a bit closer or, to the mark. Yeah. Oh, he wanna, I want to be tough. Yeah, no, I'm good old Tom Hill, that's me, you see. How's this show going? Because I saw it a couple of weeks ago, it was packed, and what I love about the venue, and I first went there when Taboo was on, which was the first theatre production they did in there, and it's just so intimate. Yeah. Um, and it fits perfectly with this, because basically it's a TV show that you're looking into, uh, watching Pete and Dodd and mm. it just feels so natural I mean how's it how's it doing? Oh it's great it, it suits itself very well to being a TV studio that venue because it's like a cabaret venue really and uh, it's not it's not unlike being at the comedy store going in there you have a really kind of close feel it's fantastic for a light hearted show like this Tom mm. I'm just going to have to interrupt you a moment I cannot have you sounding more butch than me on the air Oh now take the bass out He's just yeah. one of these thesps that oh, wants to sound Yeah can, Two can shows you know the voice drops yeah. down well, well, Yeah as soon as he walks out the door he's been like oh that's wonderful I'm really <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I did enjoy it. Was really it. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Can we try a little Julian Clary or something? We need. <laughs> well, I do like to try that. It'd, it'd suit me absolutely fine, Alex. How about you? <laughs> ah, he's, he's on the board tonight. Yeah. Isn't he? Any other voices you have for us? Uh, that well, a little bit of uh, a little bit of Pete and Dad. Uh, yeah, a little bit of Pete. Yeah, Pete and Dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do like to. Yeah, we do just sink into it every now and then, don't yeah, we? Yeah, Dad? just yeah. keep ourselves uh, entertained, like Alex. You know. Well, <laughs> yeah. you keep me entertained, Dad. Anyway, yeah, let's yeah, face yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll do my Julian uh, Clary impression. It's much better than yours. Hello, this Go is on. Julian Clary, and you're listening to Alex Belfield. I'm not because I've got a life. <laughs> I just saved oh, them for moments like yeah, that. That's brilliant. It's spot on. It's yeah. spot on. That was me. Yeah, uh, Victor Meldrew, Richard, Richard Wilson. <laughs> now, now you're pushing it. These are kind of A list stars. I only get the C and B kind of. N- oh, nobody okay, okay. Well, I was going to do it, but you're scaring me off now. <laughs> um, Go I've on. I've got to do it now, haven't I? you got to do it. Yeah, uh, I hope he's not listening. Um. um Hello and welcome to, to Capital Gold. My name's Richard Wilson and I'm having a wonderful time here. Kevin, with- Kevin, yeah. that's crap. Yeah, leave it. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> really, you're a professional actor, you're better than uh, that. It's these headphones. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, brain the technology, I always do. This show's great and, and I enjoyed reading Peter Cook's uh, autobiography and diaries a couple of years ago whilst mm. on holiday. My favourite line of all, which I'm so disappointed wasn't in the show, is uh, I like high drangers, low drangers and Queen's Park drangers. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and any man that can that's write your favourite line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's it for me. I mean, the ones where he's kind of effing and blinding, um, did he go mad at those points? Because there's a bit of that towards the end, isn't there? I yeah. mean, h- how is it in his mind, in your mind? Uh, he was. Uh, it wasn't that he was just effing and blinding for the sake of it. I think they were enjoying breaking taboos and they were loving doing Derek and Clive and they got picked up by the whole kind of punk feel, which, uh, which sort of you know kept them going on the crest of a wave and mm. it was uh, it was a it was a natural progression from Pete and Dud Pete and Dud is like a clean version of Derek and Clive and I think they just enjoyed sparring together mm. and they had more fun when they were largely out of their minds in a hotel room just improvising Derek and Clive into a, yeah. into a cassette player you know it's yeah. a funny old show and and you kind of set it up that you kind of can get into stuff easily because of this TV show and it kind of clicks and goes from one scene to another which is a clever way of doing it opposed to it being scenery and it's more believable in a way Um, how taxing is it on you two because particularly uh, for Dud I mean you're on all the way through and Mm. then you have to come on and steal the show Uh, it's presumably not an easy ride exhausted absolutely exhausted it's good because (laughs) Dud sort of goes on there with his Hollywood sort of fame and and, and glamour and uh, is very kind of with it and and halfway through the show gets his his thunder completely stolen uh, and he's all, all at sort of odds and ends with Peter turning up and, and he doesn't really know how to how to deal with it and he's immediately you can see the, 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 the transition in power whereas Dudley at the beginning of the show is very much in control Hollywood A-list superstar and then uh, he's, he's almost back to a naughty schoolboy you know by the mm. end of it and it's it really is um, 
Yeah, an interesting journey. It is. It yeah, is. it's very interesting journey. But Tom, <laughs> you know, it's fun. We do like to uh, to Take go on a journey. A random journey. <laughs> on, on, on <laughs> right in current, right. isn't it? Yeah, um, sometimes, you know, more we'll fun. We start in a think. good place, in a young place, mm. and we progress towards a place. More elderly, more, more twilight situations. Oh, are we different. still on the air? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was driving in my Nissan Urinator the other day, and, <laughs> and there I was, listening to Steve Wright. Obviously, I'd got Capital Gold on in the other ear yeah, and there you are and, tips. yeah well no actually <laughs> yeah, mild, no, no. mildly insulted that you wouldn't come on here first <laughs> well, I mean what are you trying to tell me well, huh? he got there first well I think it might have had something to do with Barry Cryer being involved uh, actually yeah because um you know Barry, you... old Barry gets dead. They, they call him straight up as <laughs> soon as Barry's involved you know I mean yeah. god yeah. what is it with the clap and Steve Wright. Uh, sorry. Uh, careful now. Uh, You're going into territory. This, you know, so you, uh, this yeah, is I didn't know anything about that. Oh, you mean when they... they, oh, they the oh, this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like when, when you came in here, I went, you know, joining us, we got a DB. You haven't got anyone to clap for you. You're doing it all on your own. I mean, there's, there's these two ladies Hang on here. a second. I have to clap. I've got Tarquin and Veronica in the other studio producing me from behind. I've got my two, uh, well, let's say ladies of the night who service me throughout the programme. <laughs> No one else is going to produce you from behind, let's face it. Egg, well, and who would want to, <laughs> especially for this money? Let's try a bit of Steve Wright sycophancy, because I've always wanted to do it, to be honest with you, and, and there's nothing better than having the clap on, on a Wednesday night. So let's pretend we're starting again. So joining us in the studio is Kevin and Tom. <laughs> Oh, stuff that. This is AM Professional Radio. I yeah. can't be bothered. <laughs> Molly Madalins, live across the UK. This is Capital. You like all that kind of radio stuff, don't you? I like it, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. it a lot, yeah. I find it mildly pathetic, to be honest. I mean, I've got a voice like a chain coming off a motorbike, you see. So me kind of going, Hi, good morning. It's a great day out there. 25 minutes to 11. Oh, oh lovely to see you. <laughs> I, I, that sounds like a Rolls Royce coming off a, uh, a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> a piece of coal under a door. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Kevin Bishop, who plays Dudley Moore, and uh, a DBN, one of my favourites, a double barreled name. Tom Goodman Hill, how nice it is to be in your presence, or Thank whatever I should be. This is no room for pretension on this show. There isn't. Whatsoever. There isn't. It gets no lower than this. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't Radio 4, if you've, if you've not worked it out yet. <laughs> They're the stars of Pete and Dub, which is on at the venue, and it's uh, called Come Again. Why? Because uh, it's, uh, it start well, it, it Pete, Pete and Dub, because it kind of kicks, kicks off with, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll tell this one. <laughs> Shall I feel this one? Before? Nothing gets yeah, past yeah, you, yeah. does it? Uh, Pete and Dub will, it is where it kind of starts ish where it starts to be on the fringe but it, it shows Pete and Doug getting together and they start that kind of thing and it kind of ends with come again the Derek and Clive stuff so it shows the uh, the relationship from its fledgling days to its uh, hideous uh, conclusion it was originally just called come again that was the name of it and 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 all the posters now they've got Pete and Dud come again which um, which was it was a bit of a bit of a tussle over that over mm. whether we were going to call it that or not. But I think in the West End you need to flag it up a bit, mm. and people need to know that it's yeah. it's, it's Pete and Dud. It would go, what's that? Two blokes in caps. And it's called Come Again. And like, mm. Look at that. And especially so, uh, with the Japanese tourists when they're in Leicester Square, where are you going tonight? Come again? I say, where are you going tonight? Come again? I say, where? They'd be there all day, wouldn't they? Well, before? Exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> is that mildly racist? I, I <laughs> mildly. <laughs> it's not the racism I'm worried about. It. It's more the, the terror. Joke. <laughs> They're all terrible jokes on this program. Bless you. Dudley Moore then's an interesting one. Which one is more subtle and which one's easier to play, in your opinion? Let's start with Kevin first. Well, it's difficult really because I mean, I think I had I had an easier job in terms of um, research because Dudley Moore was very at ease with, I say using his own voice, but um, he. he I don't, even, I don't even know if he ever did use his own voice because he was from Dagenham, but he, he spoke with a quite a posh voice. So uh, Dudley Moore was always kind of um, very open to talking about stuff and talking about his personal problems and whatever, whereas Peter Cook was very rarely ever actually himself. Always on guard. Yeah, always on guard, always doing a silly voice all the time. And when they were together, they were always just messing around. So very, very rarely did they ever you know, use their own voices. So it's, it was quite hard to find them together being themselves you know we mm. found probably one or two interviews that really helped us and the rest of them were just kind of like them doing sketches or doing silly voices because there is more character. material for Peter Cook there's more yeah. stuff to watch but it's um, it's just harder to find him you know he never he was never himself in public ever mm. and he publicly admitted it you know? mm. so um, he uh, it was really hard to find mm. out when he was being himself and I don't think anyone ever really saw it apart from maybe his wife but mm. even then you wonder I, he sometimes he probably saw it and then went, Ugh, he might have seen it, yeah. yeah. And got a bit scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that way. Yeah. 
Kevin, how did you get this role? I mean, did you audition in character or did I they see you as a director? Do you know, that's how I did it with the programme controller yeah. here. But <laughs> yeah. quite frankly, I'm not for a hairy chest yeah. and penis. <laughs> it didn't do me any... <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. Um, no. Basically, I, I I was doing spoons with Tom, uh, which is a program for Channel Four that we did last year. Yeah, and, very good program. Wasn't uh, it, it's excellent. Yeah, yeah, it should be recommissioned. It should but, be, um, I doubt it. Oh, cheers, Alex. Thanks for that. Thanks for you know, we do the Thank plug every time. I tell you, I've got more chance of getting my contract renewed than you getting yeah. that renewed. <laughs> you actually, you're better know how true that is. But, um, but uh, yeah, so we we did Spoons, and, and they said uh, Tom had already done the reading in London. It was a big success, and they said we're going to take it to Edinburgh. And Tom was busy doing lots and lots and lots and lots of jobs. And uh, he said, Gev, you know, I can't do it. Uh, I'm really sorry, mate, but I'd love to, but I can't. Uh, it's just the way life is. It's quite a cookie crumbles, I'm afraid. Uh, so really sorry. And I was like, oh, come on, please, come Whereas to Edinburgh. You were desperate, Edinburgh. Were you? And I was, yeah, I was desperate for it to, yeah. work, to work. You know, I, I was selling my ass on, on, you know, down the road. And, uh, and Tom I was going to say, you do look like a bit, a bit like a man boy, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You've never ass. slept with Mark Oten, have you? Or, sorry? Pardon? <laughs> just wondering, politicians. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you do have that kind of that kind of um, what, a gay um, yeah look, rent boy look. About yeah, me. thanks very much. Is, is that are you, are you ganging up on me, you two, because you're both ginger? <laughs> is that is that what's going on? Because well, I'm well, on the only block in the room. I don't know about you, uh, DBN, but I'd not even noticed. No, I didn't notice. It's, um, yeah, well, he's dyed it for the play. We <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks, thanks for that. So yeah. you're telling me that the car, it, you're telling me the carpet doesn't match the curtains. <laughs> it, it doesn't entirely. Oh, man. Well, not at the moment. Uh, oh man, no. No. isn't that infuriating it. when you're with a lady? Anyway, well, let's move on. What? And uh, the collars and cuffs don't match. Yeah. yeah. Slightly infuriating. When was the last time you were with a lady, Alex? Stay on the dress. Well, people often not say... Not the two ladies that are in the room at the moment. <laughs> no, the, the two nice ladies at the back there. Yeah. Towards you're the calling my guest yeah. hookers. Is that, what, is, is that what this has come to now? You're actually saying they're the ladies of the street? The, no. You said that. The, no, you, you called the ladies of the night. That. They're beautiful. <laughs> and in fact, one, one it begs the question, what are they doing in here? Well, that's none of your business, <laughs> quite honestly. I'm not you're asking you, are you gay? I mean, you're coming here wearing you that t-shirt. You just said I was a rent boy. Well, I mean, you do look mildly camp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... I mean, you know, we look at uh, our friend Tom, G.H. And, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing camp about you, is there? Thank you. I, no, I, I've, I've worked those for years. High heels he's wearing. But other than that, it's all straight down the line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What happens after this, then, in the West End? Do you go on tour, or do you leave it and you've had enough Tom and I doing La Caja Fall. No, uh, we're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're... Um, Have you guys seen the Moulin Rouge in Paris? I saw it the weekend. It is the most... You've got to go for all the wrong reasons. At one point, there's a topless woman dressed as a clown pulling a donkey around the stage. I've never seen anything That's like that. That's in our there. show. That's in our show. You should come and see that it. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, are you, are you enjoying yourselves in this? Because it's hard work, but presumably... Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, have, it. we have a blast. We'll, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. You're making people laugh every night, which, uh, yeah. you know, naff though it sounds, is a fantastic thing to do. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's great fun. I mean, also, I mean, th now the audiences are, are bigger and bigger all the time, and uh, and tonight we had an absolute stormy show, and uh, they they really, really loved it. And even yeah. today's matinee was just, uh, even though they don't even advertise the matinee, uh, it's yeah. it was it was surprisingly full, and, and, and they were a great audience, and they were really chuckling along. Um, someone died in the audience, but it doesn't matter. But, yeah, they, they, but maybe they died laughing. The you know what I mean? Mm. Well, it adds to the comedy, I think. Don't you? What if someone dies in the mm. audience? Yeah. Oh, I think yeah, so. hysterical. Yeah. Nothing funnier than, than a dead the, the, person. No. Actually, I did a play once, right, in Chichester, and t and in the run, which which lasted three months, two people actually died in the in the audience. Seriously, they uh, cleared the they cleared the auditorium. So, so thank it you. It follows you around. This like occurrence, to get doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. People do just spontaneously just, just die around me. themselves. Yeah, especially those that are really close to me. Kevin, it doesn't surprise Sorry. me that you're in Chichester and you're on stage near a stiff. To be honest, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, oh my god. It's not surprising to me that. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to make any more comments about your private life. That's between you and your boyfriend. And listen, it's really nice talking to you guys because you're, you're... Oh, it's been a pleasure. You're pleasure. naturally funny. Oh, well, yeah, I can tell that. And uh, it was better than Steve Wright, wasn't it? Let's be uh, honest. Well, yeah, well, without the claps, I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I can arrange that. Do you want me to... Like, yeah, get on, let's do a clap. Come you on. know, because we've, uh, we've got Tarquin and Veronica and uh, all the people. Come on, then. One, two, three. <laughs> ah. 
Oh, yeah, superb. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I've got to do it in that kind of... Hi, so there you go. Thank you very much to Kevin Bishop, who plays Dudley Moore, and also to uh, Tom Goodman. Hill. He's a DBN. Yeah, double barrel gnome. Oh, he plays Peter Cook in the... Oh, I just can't, I can't be arsed with that, to be honest. Oh, I'm, don't I'm, worry. You'll I'm, get there in the end. I'm too old and bored, to be honest. In fact, Classic FM are moving in down the street. I think I'm going to go there, and because they have, like, 12-minute records. Yeah. And you just... You, you can literally die on the air, and nobody would notice. Yeah. Listen, right? Don't get bitter about it. I think you're really good, right? Yeah. And Tom, what do you think? Yeah, you give it a bit more time. I reckon right. you're great, man. I really, you'll really do. Listen, it won't be long before you're in there with... I Simon know, Bates. Simon Bates. Yeah. Or Bates. maybe Jamie Theakston or someone like that. Well, I know it's, cla- I, I I know it's Classic FM How kind and they of... start varnishing the handrails in this building, so what's that all about? Yeah, that's weird, <laughs> that wasn't it, yeah. <laughs> What was that all about? I don't know. Just Bates slide down the banisters or something? It's yeah, cool. it's because Jimmy Carr wants to go home of an evening. He goes, <laughs> <"Woo!"> <laughs> Michael J. Fox thing when he slides down the banister. Went, Men, have been, done now. Men have been rubbing things up in this building for a long while. Anyway, oh, God. listen. <laughs> I, I better so go need now. To get it. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there's a lot of it around, but I'm just grateful I'm not, actually. <laughs> yeah, you're up the road from that, it. Look. That's, that's show business, isn't it? <laughs> listen, good to talk to you. Kevin Bishop is Dudley Moore and uh, Tom Goodman Hill. I love he's DBNs. Yeah. And uh, he's the posh one. <laughs> and the slightly, well, very less camp one who <laughs> plays Peter Cook. <laughs> Listen, guys, good to talk to you. Good luck with the show. It's on at the venue in Leicester Bless Square. You, Alex, you yes. can't miss it. You kind of go to the top and then keep going up. And if you end up with a load of Chinese people, you've gone too far. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good night. That's always a good, good night. Good night. Across London, the late night revolution with Alex Belfield. Capital Gold.